Right now, we're talking about the Toronto real estate market. Everyone's talking about Toronto real estate market. It's the perennial fan favorite of discussions to really hold our head in our hands and be woeful over the affordability issues, the supply issues. But uh huh, there's some good news. Toronto's real estate market roars back to life, ending the short-lived buyer's market. That's according to a Toronto Star headline. Well, let's go to one of the guys who knows the market the most all across this great city, Frank Leo from Frank Leo and Associates. Frank, good to speak with you again. How are you today, sir? Good morning, Anthony. Very good, thank you. How is the market looking? Because, you know, it's been a lot of a lot of frustration and concerns, but I understand things are starting to change a bit. Well, you know, we're glad to see the, uh, the stats come out where, you know, more sales have happened, and that means that people are getting adjusted to the new realities where, uh, you know, they're, they're jumping into the market at today's interest rates, and that's a great thing. So sales going up 37%, fantastic news. What does it mean, Frank, to transition from a buyer's market? And what does it mean that the buyer's market was, was so, so brief? Well, I mean, I hope that it's over. Uh, you know, there's a balance of how many homes for sale, how many people are buying homes. And so that creates the balance of buyers or sellers. If there's more homes for sale than there are uh, buyers there. That's a, a buyer's market. If there's less homes for sale than the amount of buyers, then it's a, it's a seller's market. Being balanced is a good thing. You know, so the news is all positive regarding people jumping into the market, and that's great news, and, and people have to adjust their ability to buy because the purchasing power has diminished because of the higher interest rates, but they've accepted that, and that's a good news. So, Frank, there's a lot of numbers, stats, and reports, but there's also people's lives, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, their incomes, and how they're making it work. Uh, you speak to people every day about their aspirations for their life. What what are people telling you right now? So there's there's two sides to the story. And, you know, it's great that buyers who have been waiting are jumping in. They've accepted the realities of what they can afford, and they're buying a home at the current interest rates. There is another side that I'm a little bit concerned about for families who have to renegotiate their mortgages that were very low, and that's still occurring for the next two or three years. You're going to see people having to renew and pay exorbitant amounts more per month And that is causing some pain for a lot of families. So that's not out of the equation yet. So, Frank, when you say that people are kind of accepting the new reality, does it mean they were sitting on the sidelines hoping for a better deal? Does it mean that they've acknowledged they're just paying a lot more in their their monthly income than they were expecting on their mortgage payment? What's the math that, that folks are doing right now? Well, I don't think you, you can pay more because there's formulas right. that allow you to borrow X amount of dollars. But with the same amount of money, unfortunately, you can't buy the same size of property. So they've accepted they have to get less home for the same money. And once you have that, you have, you know, a new reality, which is fine. I mean, like inflation at the stores, you know, the bag of tips I buy now has a lot less in mm. it than, than before. Where do you see things headed in terms of just the pricing of listings? I, I was shocked to find in my neighborhood, I live in a, a middle-class neighborhood, and when homes were getting over $2 million, I was like, oh, what's going on here? There's a home near me that's going for $4.5 million. Now, it's a teardown rebuild, and it's a quite luxurious home, but still, I didn't think I lived in like a $5 million home neighborhood, but people are waking up and seeing, learning that they do now. They're surprised. Well, you know, prices is, uh, is, every neighborhood has a different price, but overall, the prices have come down from 2022. And so mm-hmm. there has been an adjustment. Yes, uh, there are still homes over $10 million, $5 million, three, but that same home would have sold for more money back before the interest rates did increase. So are you optimistic right now that folks who want to make it work want to have a home for their family to, to raise a family in or to grow old in or whatnot, that, that they're going to see stuff happening more for them soon? I'm very happy that, uh, you know, the buyers out there are realizing that they can buy a home. Uh, they have to readjust the lifestyle they, they live in terms of square footage. Uh, you know, we, we have to uh, face the new reality. But, yes, that's a good thing. My concern is those people who are locked into previous purchases who have debts that maybe are a little bit higher. Uh, we want to get those people taken care of and out of that uh, difficulty. And then we'll have a truly you know, better situation for everyone. Our guest is Frank Leo from, of course, Frank Leo and Associates. Uh, Frank, I don't think your industry has been so uh, politicized as it is now in terms of discussions around things like foreign students 
uh, coming here and what the pressure of 900,000 of them a year means on the system. We've seen that now reduced to about 350,000. The Trudeau government made that statement. Uh, We've just learned that uh, there are certain foreign buyers, taxes and bans that are being expanded. What do you make of all this um, intense politicization of your industry right now? Well, I think that the issue is that uh, there's not enough homes for the amount of homes. And so we're looking at ways to help uh, increase the supply for Canadians. And that's some of the tactics that are used by the government. We hope that they work. But fundamentally, the problem is not those issues of foreign students and, and, and people from foreigners, but having more homes built because we do have the land. We just get, get the homes up. And you think, Frank, that we can make this work if we just sort of put our heads together and, and plow through the red tape? You think things can, can deliver results? We have the land. We have the, the capacity to do it. I mean, uh, there's a few elements. I mean, the cost is an issue. And, and also the, the red tape is, has been delaying the process tremendously. So if we can eliminate those factors, I think by having more supply, all problems will be fixed. All right. There you have it. Frank Leo, always good to check in with you, sir. Have a good day. Have a great day, Anthony. Thank you. Talk with Frank about headlines saying Toronto's real estate market bouncing back to life after a short-lived buyer's market.